as you know, Appleton, as a Jamaican, Appleton is flowing from my blood. Uh, <laughs> so to work to work with the legendary Joy and the legendary Luca, and they actually got Campari to say, yeah, no problem, let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's so for Campari to say, yeah, we see where rum is going. Yeah. And for them to just do something that no one else has ever done was just absolutely amazing. So to be a part of that was just was just brilliant. And yeah. uh, did, I think we did about four sessions um, with various different distributors and influencers and journalists. And each session was just as good as each other. And I, I got to yeah. taste and sample uh, the unique rums all the time. Um, yeah, and, but yeah and that was just absolutely amazing. We're, we're patiently waiting to get our... <laughs> well, you know what? I heard, that, I heard that Jamaica only has a hundred bottles. Uh, that's it. So I don't know how much Cayman's gonna get because uh, yeah. Cayman might, lucky, might get ten. <laughs> ten of each. Ten of each. Our, our um, customers, I've been telling our customers about it, um, uh, and and they're very interested because it's such a rare offering uh, oh, coming nice. out of Appleton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a piece of history, and when Appleton do projects like this, uh, if you, if you, when you understand rums and history. Uh, historical it's it's stuff that will never be recreated again um there'll be other yeah. products similar but of that particular bottle that particular liquid inside there won't be recreated i mean for the yeah. first time enjoying appleton put that together it was a a single mark um and then it was a single or a couple of barrels of that single mark put together and normally yeah. that rum that's in that bottle will be part of other rums that have to make right. so you're getting a component of for example the Appleton 21 in a bottle mm. but oh. that's been aged for a minimum of 25 26 years at uh, 25 26 and uh, i think it was a uh, uh 20 i think it's 27 28 yeah. <laughs> uh, of the oldest of the oldest one uh, 20, yeah, 20, 26 years so yeah it's a piece of history it's a piece of history piece of so history. it's understandable why people would want to get a bottle of that and because luca is a rum man he did the mm -hmm. small uh, 20 scale bottles. So you get a small bottle to drink and sample and taste and one to keep as part oh. of the collection. Um, so you can get the 70s or you can get the, 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 the 20s. Uh, as okay. Well. So, so yeah. If, from what you understand, what I got from the watching you guys, a certain allotment will go to Jamaica. Yes. And then from there, they would, we would get some here in Cayman. I'm assuming that. that will happen. If you're getting your Appleton rums from Jamaica, yeah. um, in fact, last time I was in Cayman in January, was it January? Yeah, January last time I was yeah. in Jamaica, I met a couple of the Appleton reps that had come over just doing some research on on, uh, on some of the rum events there. We wanted to do some work together. Uh, I definitely want to do some work in Cayman with rums. So that was all part of the, 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 the cookout. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the Cayman cookout, so they came over there. So I'm assuming that there's a, a, a good connection with Appleton and Cayman, actually Jamaica, Cayman family. Absolutely. family Absolutely. As well. um, the so biggest you know, brand there. That's actually, unfortunately for you, that your allocation might come from that allocation, which doesn't seem much when you're talking about the grand right. scheme of things, but of each, of each uh, product that they had, there was 9,000, 3,000 of each. So basically okay. 9,000 bottles in total, 3,000 right. of the, the 94, the 95, and the 99. Um, and then of, and, and then they haven't worked out how much of the 200s so they're gonna make, but I'm assuming it'll be about of similar. So uh, okay. um, uh, Italy has a certain amount, Czech Republic has a small amount, uh, mm -hmm. Canada gets a small amount, UK gets a small amount. Right. It's only 9,000 bottles for the rest of the, for the whole world. We're, we're, we're waiting, man. We hope we get a, at least three bottles. Yeah, <laughs> three bottles. <laughs> but um, definitely, uh, you know, let's talk about Equiano. I, yeah. I, 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 we saw the brand. Uh, we recently got a distribution license. Oh, brilliant. Uh, we also, we're very small. We, we have yes. a retail store. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, very rum centric. Um, mm -hmm. We have the four square rums. We have Worthy nice. Park. Uh, nice. You know, we're trying to get some other uh, rums. We have, you know, Appleton, of course. We have uh, Mount Gay. Yes. Uh, some of our top sellers. And then, we, you know, we came across your brand and we were like, you know, it's just, we had to have it. We did our research online um, and then we started, you know, we reached out to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, Thank and you. you. Yeah. And you said that it was, you know, let's make it happen. Yeah. you know, to, to introduce Equiano to the Cayman Islands. Uh, so uh, to, uh, for us, it's a great honor to yeah. represent this brand here and to, to promote this brand down here. So we, we were just going to ask you a few questions about, yeah, you, know, sure. Sure. you know, like for me, uh, where, uh, you know, I, at night I, I'm, I, I'm thinking about 
you know, I'm like, why, why, how did he figure out to have like uh, get rum from Mauritius mm. and then ship it down to Barbados and blend yeah. it with the four yeah. square rums and like, so where did the idea come from or, or how did it, how did it start? Well, I mean, the idea came about uh, of being a global ambassador. Um, when uh, uh, very fortunate that I get to try and sample and work with so many distilleries around the world that are making some of the best liquids in the world, let alone rum. So when my business partners approached me um, to, with an idea for a concept um, for a rum brand, I said, well, you know what? In my years of experience, that concept may not work, but there is elements of it that could work. And it was timing. It was about, it was, it was, it was time to actually put my name to a brand, actually create a brand, uh, something yeah. something that will be a legacy, something that I can look back and say, wow, you know what, I'm so proud to be proud of that. Something yeah. that maybe kids can grow up and say, oh man, daddy created that. Um, <laughs> friends and fellow rum drinkers uh, in the future will be sipping and drinking um, that particular brand. So that was the the, the general uh, idea of uh, putting a rum together. But then it's all about the, the, the mechanics, the story, the liquid, um, authenticity. Um, all the things that I, I like to promote and love about the rum category, this rum had to say all of those things. Um, and also not compromise my position as, a, as an ambassador for the category. Because although I'm not officially paid by any particular rum company, all of these rum companies hire me to talk about their rums and the category of rum. So also I wanted to try and create a brand that was also elevating the category of rum. Um, and still say to everyone else, if you're not drinking us, Drink an Appleton, drink a Malgay, drink a Four Square, uh, drink an English Harbour if you're in a, uh, Antigua, drink a Chairman's Reserve if you're in St. Lucia. So I want to be talking about all of these rums uh, as well because they are great, great liquids. So uh, being a, a Jamaican, but and also a, an African Caribbean here in the UK, um, we wanted to try to create a, a rum that really displayed part of the heritage. Now, Africa, as you know, is the epicenter of the world for me. Uh, so everything, so all creation came from. But if we're talking about rum, the epicenter of rum is the Caribbean. And Barbados is the place where rum got its name. So, and unfortunately, I have a good friend, a colleague, and also uh, um, a shareholder in Equiano, Richard Seal, who's making some of the best liquids in the world. So I said to Richard, listen, I, I want to create a, a brand. i loved you to be involved with it, and my idea is uh, to create a, an African Caribbean rum and getting rums from Africa. Yeah. And, and I know there was one particular rum brand that he enjoyed, he liked. We were trying in Hong Kong, funny enough. That's from the African continent and that was rums from Mauritius. So he said, yeah, okay, fine. Because I said, I want to get rums from New Grove. Bring some of those rums out here um, to for you to blend and uh, a crate. And so Richard gave the okay for that. So it was then getting the right rums, getting the samples, from Mauritius, mixing them with some four square rums at home in my kitchen, <laughs> tasting that, and basically come out of a, a profile that I was like, wow, you know what? I could sip that, I could drink that, I could mix that, and still feel nice. Richard described it really uh, perfect for me as well, when a lot of people, some people saying, I really get that four square signature inside there. And Richard mm -hmm. said, the four square signature is there, but it's the extra component component is that French oak or ex-cognac yeah. barrel rum from yeah. Mauritius that's blended in there. It takes yeah. it to that slightly different dimension. Um, we're not saying it's better than any other four square. We're not saying it's better than any other uh, Mauritian rum, but it's right. just not different. But more, more importantly, um, I'm, I'm always an advocate of people having session. I suppose that's the, the Caribbean inside us. It's like, you have a rum, bottle must finish before we leave. So it has to be a session rum. Uh, because Richard is known at the moment for making some great, what we call the exceptional casts, which you know, I assume you have some of them there. And some of those yeah. rums, they're the rums you just sip and you savor and you nurture. Um, you just need a little tipple of that. Yeah. And you just little enjoy tipple the, the flavor, incredible correct. flavors coming correct. out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of them are cast shrimp and some of them are just under cast shrimp, like 56 up to 63% ABV. And that's yeah. a different animal. That's one you just sit down and enjoy if you're into cigars, you have a smoke of your cigar, and you take your time with that. In Jamaica, would say you nurse that. But I wanted to create a rum that you have to doctor. <laughs> a doctor, <laughs> as in like, finish it. Finish it. A session rum. A session rum. Um, as such, and there's a few rums that I see as session rums. I see like Appleton 12 is a session yeah. rum. Um, yeah. Dorley's 12, Dorley's XO, session rums. You and a couple of friends, you sit down with that bottle and then you finish that either with coconut water, or you drink it with ice, you drink it with meat, yeah. you drink it with your favorite mixer. Um, and that's what we used to do back in the days where we were around the table and having a laugh and a lime it uh, yeah. with rum. So 
Quiano had to be a premium version of a session, a session rum, yeah. and bring in new, and more importantly, bring in a new audience uh, to rums. Yeah. Because it's not only made for rum lovers, it's also made for people that drink whiskey and drink brandies and aged spirits. Uh, right. And that's another reason why the palette and the chain, that the profile had to be one that was easily accepted um, onto your palate, into your nose, into the aromas. So a lot of combination, a lot of a lot of things were being thought about when we were trying to come up with a blend and the, the concept of what they were on it was. Um, so we've gone with 43% alcohol by volume, just to give that little bit of extra, uh, extra bite instead of doing like in Europe, a lot of premium rums are sold as 40. Um, of course, we didn't want to go to the car strength, but we will be doing some high-end uh, stuff because the, the Equion you have there will be our entry level for um, our gold yeah. star. So we're only going up um, just for the gold, for what we see, the, the age stuff. So next ones will be either uh, an age plane or maybe a vintage. We're using some vintage okay. four squares and some vintage greys rums from Mauritius. So in answer to the question, um, yeah, we wanted to create a drink, a, a rum that, uh, that people would say was a drinking rum. Can it be yeah. sipped? Yes. Can it be mixed in a cocktail? Yes. Can I sip it with my favorite mixer? Yes. Uh, it's a drinking rum. Um, and it had to have all those components and the flavors of, of the two islands. We really have a strong yeah. passion for, for rum. And, yeah. and, and to me, this is such a, a wonderful and unique rum. Uh, and it was something that needed to be introduced here as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. One more uh, beautiful expression of rum for people to you know, you, you enjoy your Appleton and, and you enjoy your Four Square yeah. and, and you enjoy your Fortran and whatever it may be, but yeah. it's just yeah. good to have different, to taste different rums from around the world. And then you you, you, you mold your, your, your palate. You're going to stick to what you like your, mm. as your daily drinker, possibly. Um, but for us, it's about introducing people to rums uh, from around the world. Yeah. And then you, you, you hone in your, uh, your palate and, and you take in a weird way, in a, in a liquid, you taste in the history and the culture of different countries, you know Correct. what I mean? So, Correct, yeah. And so, so and, and, and again, you, you just highlighted the point, there are rums from all around the world and, and have different nuances. Um, but what's funny is when rums are compared to whiskey, the default for whiskey seems to be scotch. So people compare rum to scotch. But you highlighted about rums are made around the world, but whiskeys are made around the world as well. Mm -hmm. um, so scotch is not the same as Irish. And Irish is not the same as um, American bourbon or rye. Um, and American bourbon or rye is not the same as uh, Canadian or even Japanese whiskies. So they have their slight differences, in fact, big differences in, in, in some of the whiskey, um, in some of the whiskey profiles. Some are finished in sherry casks. Um, some will use new woods, some will use once used bourbon barrels. So there were different styles of whiskey. Within Scotland, you've got your, your space eye, which are quite fruity and subtle, which, are, which is my favorite style of, yeah. of Scotch whiskey. But then you have your big, peaty, robust, brine, a salty islands. Um, again, so if you're, in your, you're into your Arbegs and, uh, and um, your Lafroigs, then yeah, that, that's your style of whiskey. But you get that with rum. So you have your big Jamaican rums uh, as well. So with lots of flavor and Appleton, as you know, is a blended rum that maybe is not as funky as rums coming out of Trelawney from like Hamden uh, or Long Pond. So yep. slight differences, even with the island of Jamaica, you get, but it's still big and heavy in flavor compared to say Barbados, which is a bit more lighter, medium bodied, fruity, still got lots of wood. If you're maybe going up north to Mount Gay or coming down south to Four Square, which they, they, they blend and age their rums slightly different. Um, and then you've got other extremes. You go to St. Lucia. Now St. Lucia, we know is, depending on what rums you have in St. Lucia, can be really big and boisterous. Whether it's like a Chairman's Reserve with some of those two pot stills, the Ben Dome or the John Dawes inside there, mixed with their beautiful column still. Or it might be light, 100% column, uh, but single column, what we call traditional column, like the Amarodney, which again is just one of the best rums on the planet. Uh, but that's just coming from one island, from one distillery in St. Lucia, and English Harbour in Antigua, the same thing. They come with a supply still, uh, so they're producing something light, medium bodied, and fruity, but they're all different from each other. And yeah. as you said, it's about finding your niche, tasting it. I haven't found my niche yet because I drink too much rum. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, finding your niche and then saying, yeah, I like that, I like that. But if any good quality rum uh, will have, if you enjoy quality spirits, any good quality yeah. rum will be able to deliver a profile, a sensation, um, a satisfaction that you can then sip and savor and appreciate uh, yeah. that 
And that's what I'm hoping that people, when they start trying to taste Equiano, they're in that type of a mindset. They appreciate good spirits. Uh, um, I think one of the roundabout compliment ways we got from a general consumer was they were like, wow, you know what? That is the, that, that rum is so sweet. It's just so easy to drink. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what do you mean sweet? Because there's no sugar added to it. It's 100% right. all natural. And they're like, wow, it's just really sweet. And that's a testament to the blending skills of, yeah, of Richard yeah. at Foursquare. That he's got that natural sweet rum, which is what you get from a Barbados rum. Barbados rum, true Barbados rum is sweet, but not sweetened. Now, I, 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 yeah, I have some great rums that have been sweetened, but it's just that this one doesn't have to, have to be. Awesome. So there, there are more offerings coming. Uh, yes, yes. We actually guessing. have. We actually have next year um, because uh, a lot of a lot of being a being a person that works in the industry of a lot of bartenders, um, a lot of bartenders have said, "Well, we'd love we like Equiano in cocktails, but will you be able, ever do a lighter Equiano to use for some of the lighter styles of cocktails?" So the next Equiano we're producing, which should be ready uh, in the next three three months, three four months, um, taste samples recently, uh, will be a lighter uh, version of Equiano. It's a, still a blend of rums from Foursquare and Mauritius. Um, but instead of doing two molasses rums, we're doing a molasses rum and the fresh sugar cane juice rum. Blended yeah, together. Yeah. Yeah, blended together. Serious? Yeah, man. Yeah, there's a... What? Some yeah, of the samples man. here. <laughs> I always thought about yeah. that. Yeah, man. We do that. So we did some tastings. We, did, we actually did a tasting last week of a few bartenders. It's a, it's like three-year-old Foursquare. Um, and then we blend some younger age um, fresh sugar cane juice rums and, and unaged fresh sugar cane juice rums from Mauritius just to give that little finish. Um, so we didn't want it to be totally um, uh, sugar cane juice like a Martinique or, um, or Guadeloupe, uh, the agricoles from there. We just want to get a little bit of that grassiness and that sugar cane note on the aroma and on the taste on the finish. But what it does gives a really nice earthy type of feel and it's a light rum. Color wise, it's like a straw color. Yeah. Um, so we don't call it white, although a lot of people will, but it's a light. So we call it Equiano light, 43% alcohol again, okay. but that in a daiquiri, just two ounces of that, one ounce of fresh lime, half an ounce of enough sugar syrup, give that yeah. a good shake and a twist of orange and you've got a beautiful taste in uh, Equiano light daiquiri. Okay. So again, we wanted to have the blends of Mauritius, Barbados, Africa and the Caribbean, but um, bringing something different to say, but we add a little bit of fresh sugar cane juice. Yeah, sure, sure. As I said, it's a case of the timing was right. And because um, I work with a lot of distilleries, I'm very excited for the future of Equiano because it means with myself and with Richard, we have access to a lot of good quality rums, not only just from Barbados, but from other parts of the world um, and the African continent as well. Um, what we can bring to Barbados and we say, to, and, and Richard and myself will say, right, okay, let's try something new get a few thousand bottles of that and then let people drink it and try it and have a different experience. Yeah. Um, you have that in whiskey, you have the Johnny Walkers of the world who make some great blends, some of the best liquids in the world because they have access to some great single malt whiskies in Scotland. Why can't we do that in rum where we have access to some great rums from around the world and create some really good blends uh, for people to sip, savor and enjoy. Whether you're the casual rum drinker, whether you're the serious connoisseur, um, or whether you're the mixologist and bartender, um, or more importantly, if you're a whiskey drinker or brandy drinker that wants to get into rum, then yeah. come and try a, a rum like Equiano. Absolutely, um, and, and I know we, we don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're a busy oh, man, but I, I love talking about rum. <laughs> uh, so, so the name. Tell me about name. Mr. the Equiano, the person, and and yes. why the. Again, that was a, another important uh, part of the story and another important part of why I decided to get involved in, and, and get involved and do a rum. So Alauda Recreano was uh, a person I'd learned about uh, in Saturday school because it wasn't part of the school curriculum because in school in the UK, they don't have um, black history. Um, they have it Black History Month, but you don't really hear, learn about black British history, let alone black history as part of the school curriculum. Um, so I learned about uh, Alauda Recreano when I was very young, was amazed about just simple things that he did um, in a country where he was definitely in the minority, but at a time where people like himself as an African were seen as property as opposed to seen as a human being. So when he was enslaved, um, by the time he was 11 uh, in Africa, he was brought over to Barbados. Um, he was then taken to America and sold um, uh, to a captain of a ship and brought to England. So his journey was um, Africa, Barbados, US, and uh, the UK. 
And that is the same journey as our rum, the rum makes. Our rum starts off in Africa. It then travels to Barbados where it's blended with Barbadian rum. Uh, and then from Barbados, it goes to America and it goes to the UK. The rum will go to this Epiano Foundation um, until we start making a profit because we are still fairly new, less than two years old. We're donating two, $2 of every bottle sold from our website and two pounds from every um, um, bottle we sell from our website. And that goes to our chosen charity. Um, this year, our chosen charity is Anti-Slavery International, one of the oldest um, uh, anti-slavery organizations in the world but started off in the 18th century, sorry, 19th century. So we're partnering them. We'll be doing some events and some, um, some uh, fundraising activities uh, next year uh, involving Equiano just to raise money for that. And then, and then that will be going to certain projects that are happening in, in Africa. Um, and then we'll just assess and see how we can then develop develop that relationship over over the world uh, to uh, help eradicate modern slavery because we still see a lot of that today. So yeah, again, it's something we, we as founders of the company, we wanted to uh, uh, consciously drink, consciously be aware of our, our environment. Yeah, that's it. Mr. Ian Burrell, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> much respect. Uh, signing out from the Cayman Islands, you're yeah, in London, I'm, London I'm, town. I'm jealous though, I'm jealous though, because I wish I was, I was, I wish after this that we'd be sitting down just having a little sip. I know it's early in the morning, it's like yeah. 10 to 2 here in the afternoon in London and it's grey. I will be having a sip of rum because you got me in a rum mood now. <laughs> um, and it's Friday, so uh, I think I might have a little, little rum um, before, before happy hour. <laughs> All right, well, I'll definitely sip on one today too in honour of you and uh, we will just keep it, uh, the borders soon open up. The world will yeah. get back to normal. We'll be international again. And That's just it. keep representing uh, rums from all around the world. Just go uh, to I'll go do. Well, as soon as they let in, a, let in a tourist again, I'll be on a plane. I can quarantine inside a, a friend of mine's hotel for a couple yeah. of days. I'll have my certificate anyway. So yeah, I had the test and that. So I might be out there quicker, than, earlier than you think. <laughs> uh, all right, brother. Much respect. I all really appreciate it. The wife. Bye. Pete, good seeing you again. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing the bringing the rum and joining the. And thank you for joining the Equiano Rum family. We're going to have some fun on this journey over the next few years. Absolutely, we're looking yeah. forward to it. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. All right. Take care of you. Thanks. All right. Be safe. And big up, Conti. Blah 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 blah. <laughs>